My name is Daisha Clay. I'm the audio librarian here at Classical 91.7. While I'm a real librarian, I have a deep, dark secret. I know very little about classical music. I grew up listening to rock. And I know something about jazz. But when it comes to classical... But I really want to learn. So... Every week on this show, a classical music expert will give me a piece of classical music they think I should know, and then we'll discuss it. Come learn with me in the classical classroom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Classical Classroom. I'm Daisha Clay, and here with me today is Wu Man. Wu Man is a Chinese peepaw player and composer. More about the peepaw very shortly. Uh, she's known for playing a range of styles, blending Chinese and Western genres, for example. She's played a lot with the Silk Road Ensemble and with the Kronos Quartet. She's premiered work by Philip Glass, Terry Riley, different people like that. Uh, she's recorded and appeared on over 40 albums. Among the many awards for which she's been nominated last year, along with collaborators, she was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best World Music Album. The Camera of Houston has brought her and the Shanghai Quartet to Houston to play a concert tomorrow, and we are excited to have her here, her and her peepa here in the Geary Performance Studio with us. Wu Man, welcome to the Classical Classroom. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. So today I'm hoping that you will teach me all about the peepa because this is the first time I've actually seen one in person, and it is, well... Will you describe it? I'll let you describe it. You're the expert. Tell me what's going on with this instrument just physically. Okay, but you're staring at me. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but, but I feel like you can tell me what the different <laughs> things are. Like, yeah, well, yeah. you see, I'm holding, um, kind of, you know, hold it straight. Right, like vertically. Yeah, vertically. Yeah. And um, with the four strings, uh-huh. this is a beautiful pear-shaped yeah. A string plucking instrument. Mm-hmm. Four strings and the tuning is A, D, E, A. La, re, mi, la. Uh-huh. And it has no rosette. It has no hole in the middle. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't. There, there are two pieces of, you know, the, the material of this instrument. One is a front piece. Uh-huh. The whole piece is kind of very soft wood, yeah. kind of a pine tree. Uh-huh. And in the back, if you see the back, it's a beautiful piece. Wow. One piece on the back. That's the kind of a heavy rosewood Gorgeous. and uh, so basically only two pieces put it together mm-hmm. but hollowed inside okay and with the bamboo frets ah, on top that. I see. so that makes the sound as you mentioned that there's no kind of like a guitar there's a bigger yeah. sound you know sound hall down in the yeah. face of the instrument so that's why this the color of the instrument uh, the sound is very different than guitar and other yeah. you know, string plucking instruments. It's a very kind of outgoing in the sound, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. None of the none of the sound gets swallowed by the instrument. Yeah. Yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying. It's it's all out out. Yeah. What's what's going on up at the very top of it? So you've got these huge on a on a guitar you have these little tiny sort That's of tuning. tuning knobs. Tune me. This has huge tuning knobs and then at the very top this big kind of ornate thing. It looks like it has a dragon. It's a dragon in head. It. Yes. That's so cool. Huge four tuning what's called that? Tuning yeah. big tuner uh-huh. and then with a, a a dragon head. That's the design. This particular one I have a dragon head. Uh-huh. But uh, um, you know, it depends on different designs. Sometimes just uh when Chinese characters, music, yeah. or some kind of a flower, uh, mm-hmm. or uh, some kind of an animal. So that's that's not it's necessarily just sort of aesthetic. It's decoration. just a decoration. Okay. In in the traditional form. Got it. Know. It's very yeah. cool. Well, tell me about its origins. Where did where did it come from? Has it has it changed over time and all that kind of stuff? Um, pipa existed in China around the two thousand years. Mm-hmm. And uh, was introduced to China from Central Asia, from Persian. Mm-hmm. So, actually, this instrument related, you know, came from same family of Middle East wood. Yeah, perhaps European lute and uh, Indian sitar. So, you know, China, Chinese we call pipa, mm-hmm. and in Japan they call biwa. So it, it it's. A, came from same family. I see. 
But over over those southern years, Chinese developed this version of pipa. So this is the culmination is, of many years of evolution. Yes. Gotcha. If you see old painting um, or some old statue in China, old painting like mm-hmm. a couple thousand years old uh, statue, you will see people holding horizontal uh-huh. and with a big uh, plectrum play. Mm-hmm. And somehow Chinese developed um, holding, holding a vertical right, and yeah. with the five fingers to, on the right hand to play. Yeah, I see you've got, you when you came in to the studio, you sort of taped these crazy looking, like, <laughs> I don't know. Ugly looking. (laughs) Nails onto the ends of your your playing Um, finger. Yes, I have uh, special plastic fingernails on five fingers on right hand. And they use just medical tape taped on. Yeah. This is a a modern way to play this instrument. Hmm. In older days, probably before 1950, and the people still use natural fingernails. Mm-hmm. The reason we changed the use use those plastic pick, basically like a pick, right. because we changed the string. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see. And they're like harder on your nails? Yes. Okay. Older days, we use silk strings, but very soft. We never uh, see that version. You know, right. It's only from a history book, say, silk strings. But uh, we, we do have a nylon string later on, gut nylon, and uh, 60s started to use metal strings. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason the right hand, we have to use some kind of a pick. Yeah, or it would be murder on your fingers. Exactly, it would be cancel the concert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is this is the pipa commonly played in China? I mean, I've, they're clearly not common here, but in the yes. States, but. It's common like a guitar here. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. That common? Yeah, oh, very oh. common. Probably even more common. Huh. Yeah. It's one of the most popular traditional instrument. Mm-hmm. We call classical, you know, Chinese classical instrument. Yeah. Why I we say classical because it it's not a folk mm-hmm. instrument. Mm-hmm. It's more intellectual in some way. In older days, older tradition. Right. So very common when I started learning, uh, you know, mid seventy, later seventies. Uh, most of the kids in China, we all learn traditional instruments. So pipa was the one of the popular, but today it's still thousands of kids learning this huh. instrument. Well, what makes it unique from, I mean, we've kind of talked a little bit about what makes it unique from other stringed instruments, but for lack of a better way to put it, what can it do that, oh. a, that a guitar can't do or that a, you know, a mandolin can't do? So many things you can do <laughs> on this instrument. Okay, first of all, I want to introduce you the 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 style, okay. or what you say, the personality of the instrument, very Chinese. If we have my left hand, you already hear something, bending notes uh-huh. and, and the quiet it's kind of a style, lyrical, we call lyrical styles, mm-hmm. like this. That's, yeah, I see what you're saying. So it's a bit more flexible, I guess, the, the strings? There's Much more flexible room. because the frets are such a high if you see that. So okay. it's very different from banjo or guitar. Yeah. We, we, so we have this oh, I see. great yeah, it's opportunity. Way up off the yeah, we can, we can bend. We can bend it that high. Yeah. Wow, you just actually took one string and bent it underneath another string. That's how deep the fretboard is. Yeah, that's cool. So that and that does like give just give just a completely unique flavor. Definitely a unique flavor. But this flavor, you definitely feel like, oh, I'm in China. Yeah. Somewhere the picture in your mind. Yeah. Um, this is only one kind of style. But the other side of this instrument will be totally change the face right away. Yeah. Something well, like this. Yeah. So, wow. I know, like a rock and roll. Nice. <laughs> That's great. 
so a lot of like flamingo guitar, like uh -huh. my, my right hand. You see, that's the tremolo. So this kind of a technique in a lot of guitar, mandolin, uh -huh. oh, we all have this, how you keep the, you know, we are plucking instruments, yeah. so how you keep the long notes, like people have bow, they're bowing, but we just use the tremolo mm -hmm. to have the big line, yeah, singing, you know, like a vocal part. Um, but I think a pipa, the tremolo, it's such a unique technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that like that sort of I don't know what you call that the like constant plucking. Yeah, the we call tremolo. We call in, tremolo. in in okay. in pipa we call lunz, like wheel. Yeah, continually. So you know, five fingers going faster. But that takes, I don't know, hundreds of hours to practice. I imagine. <laughs> it looked, I couldn't even, I could barely tell what was going on with your fingers when you were doing that. <laughs> well, when did you start playing? Like, what, what, were you very young or did you? I picked up an instrument when I was nine years old. Uh -huh. And I played actually a smaller version, much more like a mandolin. Okay. Uh, but the same shape. Yeah. It, also another traditional instrument. And then when I was 12, and my teacher said, well, why don't you switch to bigger one? Mm -hmm. So so basically, officially, when I was 12 years old, I started to play this yeah. pipa. Yeah. What, what led to it? Was it was it like a school band instrument? Was it, was it Did somebody in the family play or? Uh, none of my family member play. And also a school band, uh, I started playing later when I started playing. Okay. So uh, my parents actually uh, picked up this instrument. Oh, yeah, okay. they, you know, they all music lover and yeah. they wanted me to to learn something. So they they thought that this is, uh, as I always say, you know, this beautiful shape, like yeah. very feminine. Yeah, for girl to play beautiful, you know, very <laughs> subtle, you know, when you play like half a face. Yeah. So very Chinese. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the repertoire. What did you start learning when you were a kid? What what uh, what were the who were the composers? What kind of pieces were you learning? We the tradition that there is no composer. It's it's like any other traditional music. It's more it's all oral tradition. Uh -huh. All pipa repertoire first notated down in later nineteenth century. Uh -huh. Later nineteenth century, we have pipa score. Okay. Before that Before time, that, not so much. There's no music. Wow. It's all oral tradition by okay. generation. Wow. Yeah, it hmm. very much like other tradition besides the Western classical music. Yeah. We we have a composer to write, but a lot of culture they don't have a sort of a composer. Mm -hmm. Composer kind of very 20th century. So, thing. so you were learning stuff that was only recently only, written down. Yeah. Stuff that had, so, yeah, my generation okay. learned all from that book. I see that Pika okay. book. Yeah. So, it's all have already have a notation, mm -hmm. but there's no composer. It's just all different right. style piece you have to learn. Like it says, by a dude who lived in the mountains or yeah <laughs> exactly like, yeah. exactly yeah yeah or, or you know very poetic titles very uh, beautiful uh, -huh. uh you know fisherman song you know oh will you play one? Night, play uh, one of these lovely sounding pieces flute and the drum music at the sunset oh play that one can you play it oh yeah i play like short uh okay okay short
That's so cool. What was that one called? Um, flute and the drum music at the sunset. Okay, that was really neat. Well, so who now, aside from yourself, of course, or who's composing for Pipa? So started. 20th century, like start 40s, 50s, 60s, mm-hmm. starts with a composer writing piece, but still very limited, not very much. Mm-hmm. And and now I have a lot of composer writing for this this instrument in China and also outside of China. You know, yeah. I'm here and in the States and a lot of excellent, great musician, composers start writing for me. Mm-hmm. When I was actually listening to some people on music online, mm. was that it can sound a lot like a, a bluegrass instrument. Can you talk about how, like, you are kind of known for 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 blending different styles and playing all kinds of different styles? Can you talk about why the pipa works with like American mm. kind of Western folk music? I think actually, to me, they're they're. If you understand the music, if you learn, you know what kind of occasion they play, why this kind of music, you know, party music, outdoor music, happy or sad. Mm-hmm. And for musician, actually, it, it, it makes sense to catch that kind of language very quick mm-hmm. um, if you wanted to learn, if you wanted to play. So for me, um, you know, people thought, well, basically, this instrument sometimes does sound like banjo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, like, okay, if I play like... <laughs> very much. Yeah. Very yeah. much like, a, you know, in some way like a Chinese banjo. Uh-huh. So um, that kind of related similar music language. Mm-hmm. So that's easy to... People think, oh, yeah, people could play bluegrass. Yeah. So that's how we involve, I involved. And also, um, again, sometimes like blues. Yeah, totally. That's yeah. interesting. So you're saying that like basically if, if you have that sensibility you can bring it out of this instrument. Yeah, I, it really, really depends on. Uh, to me, it's experience as a musician, and if you not, if you step out, you not. Well, if you go back to when I play the traditional Chinese music, you definitely hear that. You know, uh-huh. yeah, this is chi- chi- from China. But somehow, if I play blues, yeah. people will say, "Wow, this is something different." This is. To me, it's a natural. Uh, for music, it's, there's actually no sort of boundary. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, why Chinese play piano? It's the same thing, why composer write Chinese or Asian composer write for symphony. Yeah. But somehow the sound come out differently, but it still makes sense. Yeah. Well, you're going to be playing with the the Shanghai Quartet while you're in Shanghai town? Quartet, yes. Um, what are you going to be playing with them, I mean that's we're gonna play some new piece. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A collaboration we will probably te- Texas premiere. Okay, let's say yeah, Texas premiere a uh, composer Liang Lei, mm-hmm. and uh, um, he wrote a piece for us for Shanghai Quartet and myself mm-hmm. uh, two or three years ago. Mm-hmm. It's called Five Seasons, and uh, um, that's very much a sort of new music. It's you know. Just a few years old, <laughs> yeah. And um, but the 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 material he took very actually very Chinese, a lot of Chinese folk folk tune material, mm-hmm. and but somehow combined with the strings, Western strings and the pipa, put together, it, it sounded very amazing, fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes very. Again, like a pipa style, very dramatic, percussive, and sometimes very elegant yeah. so can you give us a sample of some stuff that you will be playing at the show um sample will be with the string quartet <laughs> <laughs> okay gotcha <laughs> well um uh i'd love to hear another song of your choosing if, if you don't mind playing again 
Sure, I could play some sample, but my part and maybe you know the composer Liang Lei he used um, the the dramatic part of the pipa uh-huh. style. He used very percussive sound mm-hmm. in this piece, and uh, there's there's one little part the pipa has little kind of like solo, some very quiet. Like take you to some kind of a space. Yeah, right? his harmonics. And then he has something else, like. So this is this is actually very traditional pipa uh-huh. repertoire. Pipa, we have that kind of style. Yeah. Imitated the drum, you know those. Yeah, you know? that's uh, yeah. I'm just amazed at how many sounds comes come out of this this one instrument. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah. What, what? Okay, so you're since you're so well known for playing this instrument, and you and you travel all over the world. You kind of act as an ambassador for this <laughs> this instrument. What do you want people to know about it? I guess is a it's kind of a big question, but yeah, it is a bigger question. But yeah. I'm, um, that's that's actually the question I always ask myself. Yeah, why I'm doing what I'm doing, what I want people to know. I wanted people to know. Okay, let's put this way. <laughs> I just want to share. Basically, I want to share this kind of music mm-hmm. to audience mm-hmm. to let them know in this plant there's so many kind of music yeah. different culture we can actually can appreciate each other yeah and we open mind to learn you will find much richer mm-hmm. this in this plant you will enjoy your life yeah. that's that's what i what I wanted to I love it. Do. That's great. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, Wu Man, thank you so much for being on the classical classroom. It was a pleasure. I've I've literally never seen this this instrument before, so this was very cool. Thanks. Now you see it. Yeah. It's such a close and you're yeah. like a private I know. It's like I got a <laughs> private show. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well good luck with your show tomorrow night. And uh yeah, again, thanks for taking the time. Thank you. I'm great honored. All right, everybody, that about does it for this episode of Classical Classroom. For more Classroom, go to houstonpublicmedia.org slash classroom. You can listen to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn, or follow us on Twitter. We're at CC Shows on Twitter, or you can follow us on Tumblr. Remember, we love it when you rate and review us, because every review is a step closer to world domination. Email me at dclay at houstonpublicmedia.org. By the way, I've been getting some great emails from you guys with ideas for shows that we're actually thinking about using, so keep those emails coming. Thanks today to audio producer Todd, Total Todd Holslander, for making us sound nice. Thanks to program director Sinjin Flynn for his bitter bemusement. Thanks to editor Mark DeClaudio for his creepy spiraling possum eyes. Thanks to Wu Man for being here today. Thanks to me for saying words. But most of all, thanks to you for listening. We'll catch you next time.